everyone, it's Penny. My hair is a mess because I've been working out and I'm about to work out again. So there's no point in fixing it really, aside from the fact that I'm filming a video and posting it on the internet, which most people would probably take the time to fix their hair. But my values are in other places. Like I'd really like to be able to make it to my jujitsu class on time and I'm gonna need to keep my hair at least somewhat out of the way while I do that. So hence the braids. Anyway, I am here today to talk to you about Juno in Pisces. Now, what the heck am I talking about? If you came across this video on accident, you are probably very confused right now. I'm sure you've heard of the sign Pisces. It's the 12th sign of the Zodiac, but not everyone's heard about Juno. Juno is an asteroid that is said to represent marriage and partnership. I created a little video to show you how to find it in your own natal chart. Um, it's one of the more advanced things to know about in astrology. So not everyone is gonna be on the same page with me here. But this is about marriage. This is about your ideal partnership. So I'm here to describe to you what Juno and Pisces wants, how to keep them in a relationship long-term, if you are the Juno and Pisces person, like this is what you need and you need to know what you need because then you can communicate it with other people and make sure you get it and that you are happy. Now, Juno and Pisces people, the ones that I know always seem like they really want to be realistic about things. They want to be level headed. Um, a lot of times they kind of resent the whole like head in your clouds mentality. They don't like the idea of being unrealistic or avoiding real life situations. They, they don't like it when people are unwilling to face the reality of things, which is why they really kind of resent themselves a little bit for having this kind of fairy tale idea of a relationship. So they do believe in soulmates. They really, truly believe in soulmates even if they try to fight it, even if they try to stop themselves from believing it, they still have this idea of like love on the soul level and having such a strong connection with someone. And they know how difficult it is to find that in life and find it in the real world and all these turbulent situations that we face in life, but they're still hopeful for it. You know, a lot of times they end up going through divorces, very serious relationships, that collapsed, like a typhoon came and wiped them out. You know, this is a very watery placement. But the thing about water, even though it's, it's powerful and it can transform things, it's also very healing. It can smooth over the surfaces. Um, it can renew us, you know. Even as humans, if we're dehydrated, we can stand outside in the rain and our, our skin will soak up the water again. So, you know what? No matter what kind of awful situation crushes them in their love life, no matter what kind of brutal divorce and child custody battle they go through, even if things haven't been easy, I think they always still have the ability to let their hearts heal and to seek out a soul level partnership once again. And maybe it will be with the same person. You know, I, I feel like a lot of them once they find someone that they believe is their soulmate and they know that in their hearts to be true, even if circumstances in life cause you to not be with that person for some time, you're still going to know that's the person you're meant to be with and you're going to end up coming back to them and you're not going to be able to really cut ties with that person. But sometimes people make mistakes. Sometimes people are too eager to settle down for other reasons and they're not listening to their inner voice. You know, they might be ignoring some red flags. So Venus and Pisces people, even if they completely chose the wrong person the first time around, I think they can find it in their hearts to heal and to move on and to love again and still make finding your soulmate a priority in this lifetime. All right, so aside from all of that, when you're actually with someone who has Juno and Pisces, Pisces is the sign of self-sacrifice, so they're very willing to give up everything around them and put every ounce of their energy, every fiber of their being into that relationship, throw everything else aside, 
and not do what's best for them as an individual because they are fully invested in the relationship working. So they're very prone to giving too much. So if you want to date someone who has Juno and Pisces, then you really need to keep in mind what's best for them. Be mindful of their tendency to do this and maybe tell them when to stop. Tell them, you know, you don't have to do that for me. You don't have to give that up. And I don't want to see you do that because I care about you. And, you know, if, if they don't realize that this is a mistake that they're making, if they're not aware of that yet, then they might try to fight you kind of and be like, no, no, I really want to do this. And they might not even realize the full extent of the sacrifice that they're making. But I think it's really important to try and get through to them and make sure you maintain a healthy relationship. Anyway, check out the rest of my Juno videos, especially the one for you and your partner. This also somewhat applies to Juno in the 12th house. So check the house of your Juno in addition to the sign. Um, the house of the in the signs, the houses in the signs correspond depending on the order it's in in the zodiac. So Aries is the first sign, it's the first house. Pisces is the last sign and it's the 12th house. And it just, it goes all in order from there. I hope that video was useful. Be sure to subscribe and check out my Facebook, follow my posts there. And if you need help and you need deeper knowledge on what's going on in your life, then go ahead and book a reading with me. I do them over email and over Skype. So I will see you soon. Bye everybody.